I've got uh, two grouse. These are my ingredients for my grouse permigiana. Just use a stick to beat that up a bit. There, now doesn't that look good? Hi, I'm Greg Ovens, and this is Ovens Rocky Mountain Bushcraft. So this video is catch and cook gross permigian on a fire. The thing I do not like is injuring any kind of wildlife or game. This is a semi-automatic, but I can't find the clip. So one shot's going to have to count. So the first thing we're going to do is sight this in and make sure that each shot counts. So I got a spruce grouse, it's a start to uh, my Permigian dinner, Permigian or whatever you want to call it. Okay, so we got one. I've got uh, two grouse. Uh, one thing I should mention though is you should always let grouse meat sit overnight, cool it down. Otherwise it's going to be tough. So I won't be actually cooking the dinner until tomorrow. Once the meat cools down, it's nice and tender, it's beauty. But if you cook it the same day you get these birds, it's tough, chewy. And that's probably why a lot of people don't even like, they say, oh, I don't like grouse. I ask them, well, did you cook it right away? Well, yeah, you can't do that. You have to let it cool down overnight. It's just the way it is with almost any meat. This toughness is due to rigor mortis where the grouse's muscles stiffen. Timing is different depending on the type of game. For example, grouse go into rigor mortis almost immediately, while white-tailed deer do not enter full rigor mortis for 24 hours. If game is cooked or frozen during this period of stiffness, it will be extremely tough. Enzymes will later relax the muscles and break down connective tissue. For grouse, it's recommended you wait at least 12 hours for rigor mortis to subside. Okay, so I'm going to cook my gross permigian. Permigiana, that's I think how you pronounce it properly. So I'm ready to cook my gross permigiana. I have my fire ready. That's the first thing to do is get my fire going. While the coals are burning down, then I'll clean the grouse and then I'll show you the ingredients and exactly how I make my uh, gross permigian. You keep using the word. I don't think it means what you think it means. I like using thistle down, the seeds off thistle, and then it should start, I always use a ferro rod or bow drill or whatever, but I don't know, I, I think it's cheating using the lighter matches. And then I got some goat beard here, but I've got the fire ready to go. So these burn a little longer, these seeds tend to burn a little longer than the thistle seed, but it should only take one spark. Uh, it's going to be good. Usually with this dinner, I would cook potatoes. Uh, do a mashed potato with, say, sour cream, Philadelphia cream cheese until it's nice and smooth. And then the sauce from the dinner itself goes so nice with that. In wanting to keep this video appropriate for YouTube, there is an unlisted link to the full grouse cleaning video in the description below. So these are my ingredients for my grouse permigiana. Cooking oil, Ritz crackers. I'm gonna bread the grouse with this. This is original Ritz crackers. We're gonna use that instead of breadcrumbs. Some garlic, an onion, mozzarella cheese, can of tomatoes. I like whole tomatoes and then I cut them up. We got our grouse that's clean now, one egg. I'm using the hood of my truck to prepare the dinner. Mm -hmm. It's just convenient for me. Ramsey would probably grab everything and just throw it away. Packed with the best ingredients, but no one's coming to eat it all. Is he mad? You have the most extraordinary ingredients, you know that? And if you don't sell it, you eat it. First procedure 
is to crush your Ritz crackers up. I usually just use the tomato can like a rolling pin. Use about half of them. Like I say, I don't care about the truck. It gets me in the bush, that's all I care. I sure don't care about the paint, as you can see. We're gonna grind these up. You'd be surprised how good I can cook in the bush, but I, mean, I don't have fancy tools like some of these cooks on TV with their islands and a lot of cooking shows nowadays too, I see. But none like mine. So you want it fairly fine. I find the worst part of this dinner is just getting the crumbs and breading the grouse. And once it's in the pot, on the fire, pretty easy. It's not bad. Another reason I like using the hood of my truck is I can stand up to do everything. It's just a perfect height for me. So Sometimes I clean deer on the hood of my truck. It's just a perfect height too. So now, break my egg. I'm just using paper plates, but whatever. You see, this is, this is bush cooking. This is not some fancy kitchen we're working with. I'll just use a stick to beat that up a bit. That's good enough. Take the bread crumbs, put in another plate. They're not even bread crumbs, they're Fritz cracker. That, that's the best thing to bread with, you know. People think bread crumbs are good. You haven't had any crumbs like this until you tried original Ritz crackers for your bread crumb. One goes baked with happiness. Something sitting on the Ritz. Everything will taste better. Taste better when it's sitting on the Ritz. Ritz makes food taste great. When it's sitting on the Ritz. It's a nice piece of gross meat. Once again, Ramsey would be mad I'm using my fingers, but he doesn't have to eat it. I'm going to eat it. I always push on it, turn it around a couple times. You can dip it twice if you want. So it gets more crumbs on it, but I find that once in the egg is enough. So then it should look like this. That's a perfect job. You could actually bring a fork. I just, when I'm out in the bush, I just use sticks and rocks and whatever I can find to do my cooking usually, but in this case I need a frying pan, a glass pot to do the dinner in. That's all. I got a little bit on the hood of the truck, but they say it's not good for a hood of a truck, but, or paint. But after Zach Fowler and I did the 30 day survival challenge, this truck's been through worse than a little bit of egg on the hood. We made it up here, but the truck is very close to not Working. ever making it back down. I think the heat's about right. Fair amount of oil. Gotta let the oil get hot now. I want it fairly level. So you don't want your oil to be too hot, but it has to be hot enough. I usually just dunk one end. Sizzling, that's good. If it's too hot, take it off the flames. I think it's about right. Might be a bit hot. I'm gonna move it. So you just wanna brown these, cooking nicely. Golden brown, that's what I like. This grouse is so tender, it's hard to pick up. Better just to roll it. 
There, now doesn't that look good? That's the color you want for this dinner. Now I have to saute my onion and my garlic. I'm going to dump this oil out, probably on the fire. Just let it burn up. It's not a big deal. And then I'm going to add butter to saute the onion and garlic. I use a fair amount of butter for this dinner because it seems to make a difference, actually. One thing I find in the bush is uh, one of the best implements that you can have is a stick. They're so handy. And so another thing I neglected to bring was a can opener. Knife works just fine, as long as you're watchful of your fingers. Just watch for jagged edges. Probably enough, I don't have a lot of gross anyway. So now what I do, pour some of this on the bottom. I saved some though. My gross goes next. Top of that. And don't forget, gross doesn't take very long to cook. It's probably almost cooked already. The rest of this on top, just like that. And man, our cheese. I don't skimp on cheese with this dinner either. It's nice if you can layer it. If you, if I had enough gross, I would just layer it with cheese, my sauce, more cheese. But in this case, I didn't have enough. I only had three gross. <clears throat> the whole pot wants to slide. I'm just worried about it sliding right off. So we put a rock there. Starting to get hot, the pot. So it's all coming together. It's cooking on the fire. It shouldn't take too long. I don't have oven mitts or anything, but I'll just tear a couple of paper plates in half when I have to take the lid off or move it around. That's all. Not a big deal. You gotta improvise when you're in the bush. It's just that simple. These are starting to melt. I've never used one of these glass pots on a fire. I hope it's okay. The only thing is, I'm running out of daylight. It's cooking nice. Bubbling good. Once that cheese is thoroughly melted, it's done. It's kind of overflowing though. The tomatoes, I guess, they expand. Surprisingly enough, the lid's not all that hot. But it's bubbling nice. I think it's done. Cheese is melted. I think this gross Permigiana is done. Gonna give her a go. The handles I don't trust. Use the plates for that. All right, just got to try her. Get some of that, and then I'll see the steam. It's done, I'm sure. Oh yeah. I don't have much for implements, but I'll tell you what, I love my gross. A little hot still. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. I just love gross meat, man. And this gross permigiana is just so good. So try my recipe, try it. Doesn't mean you have to do it on a fire. You'll really enjoy it. Well, 
hearty, rustic, wholesome Italian food. Rich with tomatoes, nice texture, perfectly cooked, lovely. Make sure when you watch Ovens, Rocky Mountain, Bushcraft, subscribe and share and like. Just like I like this. This is good. Done just right too. And taste the garlic and the onion. That mozzarella cheese, but the gross, that is what makes the dinner. Oven's out. It's nice and tender, it's beauty. Gross Parmigian. Ah. Gross Parmigian. Gross Parmigian. Gross Parmigian dinner. Parmigian dinner. But in this case, I'm just doing the gross Parmigiana. Gross Parmigiana. My gross Parmigian. Parmigiana. That's, I think, how you pronounce it properly. Cook my gross Parmigiana. Exactly how I make my uh, gross Parmigian. Parmigiana. 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 Ah.